So in the next part, we want to focus on color. As we can see right now, we've got a nice pretty grid, and we can change the number of squares in our grid by changing um, how much we're dividing the width by. Um, this will make a 6 by 6 grid, or we can make it a 32 by 32 grid. But we want to get these colors, these alternating color formats going white, brown, white, brown, white, brown, white, brown. And then on the next row, it goes brown, white, brown, white, brown, white, brown, white, white, brown, white, brown, white, and, and repeats. We need some sort of way of, of determining that, right? We know we can change color very easily by just going like full, right? And if I say full brown, it's going to fill the rectangles brown. Let's bring this back to an 8x8. Eight eight. But now the problem is all of them are full brown. We want to fill them in an alternating pattern. We want to fill kind of every other one in a different color. How could we go about doing that? So there's a lot of different approaches. The approach that I want to take is by exploring the numbers of each grid or of each square, right? If this is 1, then this is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and this is 9, 10, 11. Is there some sort of pattern that exists within the numbers that will let us determine a rule for if it should be brown and if it should be white, right? Or, okay, if this is row 1 over here, and this is column 1, column 2, column 3, column 4, this is row three, column one, column two, column three. Is there some relationship between row and column that could let us easily and elegantly write some sort of it statement that can let us decide if a particular square that we're drawing is white or brown? So let's label these. Let's just put numbers um, into each one of these um, grids and see if we can look at some sort of pattern. The way we could go about doing that is I'm going to make a variable outside of here. I'm going to call it, call it index. Right, or actually let's call it something more descriptive. Let's call it num squares, right? And what I want num squares to do is count the number of squares that we create in this for loop. We know we're gonna get 64, but I just want I want a nice variable that will do it like this. So inside of here, I can say num squares plus plus, right? So every single time we then draw a square, we're increasing number of squares. And then I can say text, and I'm going to display um, that variable. I'm going to display num squares. I'm going to put it at x and y. Now, that's going to put it in the top left corner of the rectangle. And let's go back to white, so maybe we should be able to see it a little bit better. Um, oh, interesting. Okay, I know why this is happening, actually. Um, let's, let's take that away from now, because it's making the text white as well, so you can't actually see it. So if I take that away, um, we should be able to see the text. And this 8 actually belongs to this square over here. This 16 belongs to this square. This 24 belongs to this square. That's because we're specifying like the top left corner of the rectangle where to start the text. So we want to displace x and y by a little bit. So let's just say like 30 and 30 in order to get it into the square. We could work it out such that it's perfectly in the square, but that, that gives you a good idea. Now we have all of our squared labels, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, if I come and look at a chessboard, what I can see is I start white, and then I go brown, and white, and brown, and white, and brown. Okay, if I look at the numbers, I have 0, 1, 2, so this would be white, brown, white, brown, white, brown, white, brown. And the immediate thing I notice is, Okay, when the number is like even or zero, it's white. But when the number is odd, it's brown, right? The one, three, five, and seven are all brown. The zero, two, four, six is white. Okay, so could I do something to say, okay, if the number is even, then it's white. And if the number is odd, then it's brown. Yes. So in here, inside where I'm drawing it, I could look at if num squares... Right? So the way we can tell if a number is even is if it's divisible by 2. Right? 4 divided by 2 is 0. Um, no, four, 4 divided by 2 is 2. Remainder 0. 5 divided by 2 is also 2, but remainder 1. Right? When we divide 5 by 2, we, we get um, 2 fits into it twice, but we left over with 1. Now we have an operator in, com in computers or in maths called the modulus operator which looks at that remainder, which says, okay, what is the remainder when I divide this, right? So when I say 5 mod 2, it's going to say, okay, what is 5 divided by 2? Remainder what? Give me back the remainder. If I say 6 mod 2, I'm saying, okay, 6 divided by 2 is 3, remainder 0. 
7 mod 2, 7 divided by 2 is 3, remainder 1. Okay, so you can see that when we have a non-zero remainder, when we're doing a modulus operation, we can tell if the number is even or odd. What that looks like in code is the following. We can say num squares mod 2 equals equals 0. If this is the case, it's even. If not, it's odd. We can already see something weird. Oh, I don't know what happened there. But if not, it's odd. Okay? So now we going back to this, we know that we want our even squares to be white and then our brown squares to be brown. So if it's like this, let's we can leave it for now. Um, and let's just put, because it's currently white, so we don't have to actually change anything. But instead of else, we can put brown. And we're going to need to change the text color because otherwise we are not going to be able to see it because it's going to be brown as well. So we can say for white. Okay, and now we're getting something. But we're, we, so we have the top row right, but all of these next rows are following the exact same pattern. What we have here is that the next row starts brown, doesn't start white. And then the next row starts white and then brown and then white and then brown. So like going column wise and row wise, we have a similar kind of effect happening. So this algorithm doesn't work. However, the approach we've taken is right in the sense of like, when we don't know how to do something, try things, just start playing, right? The more you're able to do and the more you're able to explore, the easier it becomes. Okay, so we know just looking at the number of squares isn't going to work. Let's look at a different method. And the method I want to look at is I'm going to have to open up over here and draw a little bit. The method I want to look at is to look at the relationship between rows and columns and see if we can't find anything there. Right? So this is kind of our grid over here. Right? So if we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right? And then this will be 9, 10, etc. But let's look at it differently. What I want to do is I want to say rows and columns. Okay? So I know that this is row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4. Let's just, let's just do 4 by 4. Um, yeah, let's just do four rows for now, as in what I'll show you. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so this is what our grid kind of looks like. And then we have these different squares. Now, if I look at the relationship, right, if between the row and the column, when I add them, right, so if I say one, one, I get two. If I say two, one, I get three. If I say 3, 1, 4, 4, 1, 5, 5, 1, 6, etc., you're seeing the pattern I'm doing. So I'm, I'm saying row plus column, and then I'm looking at what the value is of the individual ones there. Let's go into a different color to make that a little bit more clear. Okay, so this is, this is 2, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, this is 5. Okay, now what about the next one? Let's see, so then this would be 3. This is 4, this is 5, and then similarly, this is going to be 4, this will then be 5, this is 6, okay? Just adding row plus column. Now, what if I applied the same rule as what I just did by checking um, if the number at that particular grid is even, right? So this is even, this is even, and we know that then this is going to be even, and then this one will be even, right? Which follows along with what we had previously over here, right? It's the same sort of pattern. However, what's nice about this one is that now all of a sudden this one is odd and this one is even. Are you seeing where this is going? So now if I were to follow the rule and I said, okay, I am going to shade all even numbers in white, in white and all odd numbers in brown, right? So this is odd. Ooh, that's way too big. Let's find, uh, let's go smaller over here. Might work. So that is odd. That is odd. This one will be odd and this one will be odd. And now this one is odd. This one will be odd. This, oh, no, I skipped one. This one will be odd. And when you come onto the next line, this is even. So this one over here will be odd. And then this one over here will be odd. And now you can see we're getting this checkerboard kind of pattern. So what we really want to be looking at is if the row plus the column is an even number as our measurement or as our means of telling. So let's put that into code. So we, oh, 
we want to use row and column. And the reason I'm saying, oh, is I'm realizing another problem we have, right? We don't have row and column. We have X and Y, right? X and Y isn't telling us the row and column. Let's, let's make that clear. Let's put in um, our X, for example, instead over here, okay? And what we can see that that has nothing to do with the row or column. Um, that has to do with the top left X position of our square. So we need actually a way of converting this X into a row, into a column. Let's take away this for now so we can see it for all of them. Um, and we'll probably take away uh, the full as well. Okay, um, let that run. Okay, and now we can see all of our X's. Okay, so our X's are kind of acting as our columns, right? Because we're, we're filling in all of our X's first and then we're going down with our Y's being our rows. So we need a way of converting zero to row one, um, row 62.5, oh, sorry, zero to column one, 62.5 to column two, 125 to column three. And we know that every time, right, what we're doing is we're increasing our X value by square size. So what if I, and I can actually do math inside of the console here, if I did 62.5, right, which is our x, divided by our square size, our square size, which is 500 over 8, 62.5. So I know 62.5 over 8, or over 62.5, and I get 1, okay, if I say 125 over 62.5, I get 2. So when I divide my x by my square size, I actually get the index or the column number, right? But this time it's gonna be starting at zero. So I can actually get that. I can say my, let my column is equal to x over square size. And then similarly, the same rule apply for my row. I can say let my row is equal to um, y over square size. And now if I add the two, so now I'm saying if row plus col, um, if the number, if this result comes up, to be even, modulus 2, I want it to be white. Modulus 2 is equal to 0. Oh, look at the, like, if you saw that. Um, if, if modulus 2 is equal to 0, and then we know it's even, else um, it's odd. And then we can fill it, let's fill it black. And with that being done, oh, oh, that, uh, I was expecting that to work. Hmm. <laughs> What happened? That should have worked. Maybe we actually just need to fill this one white as well. Yes, okay, yeah, that was exactly it. Um, it's because they were setting them all, all to it. But there we go. We now have our, our chessboard. Uh, we have the pattern, the checkered grid of going white, black, white, black, white, black, and then the next line, black, white, black, white, black, white, black, white. Um, cool, I think that actually looks super good. I'm really happy with how this came out. I will end this here, um, but that's the chessboard. In the next part, we're gonna be looking at how to make this do all kinds of funky things.